This is the Hustlers Corner. Hello guys, welcome to the Hustlers Corner booth for recommendations with myself, DJ Smooth. You can call me Smooth. This is of the Smooth and Muda Smooth. That's totally up to you. I hope you guys are having a great day and your hustle is coming along okay. Even if things are bad, it's okay. They've been bad. You gotta focus on the on the positives and just um solving those solutions and continue being an entrepreneur, guys. Remember, being an entrepreneur, being a hustler, is not all glamorous as other people make it seem. Like putting Lamborghinis and just always wearing suits. It's all about the grind, getting your hands dirty and building that business. So if you are building that business or you are building your hustle, you're building that brand, you're selling those products, you're building yourself, you're out there grinding. I am here for you to share this content that might help you grow. And I always say, hustlers become leaders if they read readers are leaders because leaders are readers three books to recommend today the first one is by um the legendary Dr. if you want to take the system down provide a better alternative at least at heart i'm an engineer i want to encourage people to fix things not to raise false hopes they say about this book, his personal story is so remarkable. This country needs many Tatooine artists. And I salute him for his contribution. This comes from Professor Nick Benadel in Gibbs. Once in a while, one meets an individual and decides to break all protocols and takes a chance. This is what happened when I met with some Tatooine artists. In the 90s, I saw real raw black African talent and made a case to take a professional risk. And boy, did, he, did it pay out. This is Ndatem Polikapi, speaking of the great Ndatem um, Tetonyati. The book is called Betting on a Ducky, Lifting the Corporate Game. And uh, it's got a foreword by um, Ndatem Tabumbe. They say here, I've known and admired Babam Tetonyati's career progression. This is Ndatem Bonang Mohale saying, His determination and dedication to succeed show that he, more than most, is an embodiment of God has given his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. What an amazing book, guys. I can relate to his story because I'm a hard time building a business and the risks that I've taken, I can relate to the, the, the risks that he has taken himself as well. And having been a disruptor and having ran successful um, companies, he's basically been a part of Afrox, MTN. What are some of the other companies? It's MTN, it's Afrox. I don't know if they do right out here. But I also do know, um, he obviously went to Natal University to his engineering there. He turned down the road scholarship and headed for Johannesburg to take up a position in Afro. Yeah, he was the only black engineer at the time and the sole advice he received from his superiors was do not mess up. He did not. Today, Mteto Nyati is one of South Africa's top CEOs having steered Microsoft South Africa and MTN South Africa out of troubled times. Yeah, it is MTN. So it's MTN, Microsoft and Afro. CEO, amazing leader, amazing gentleman. He's our role model. We'll look up to him. We'll look up to you, sir. And thank you for laying down the blueprint. We admire you and we um, respect you. And thank you very much for giving us such a classic masterpiece. Go get this book, guys. Betting on a ducky. If you want to, if you are an entrepreneur, you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to grow, or you're a corporate corporate hustler, growing your career in the corporate space, this is a book for you. I'd like to recommend it by Dakemi Tatonyati. Here's another incredible book. Oh, the race for what's left, the global scramble for the world's last resources. Michael T. Clark, author of Rising Powers, Shrinking Planet, and Resource Wars. A lot of you young guys don't know that Africa has just been raped all these, all these decades, even centuries. They've been taking our minerals. See, when you, South Africa, for instance, got about 51 or 52 um, mineral resources. From ferrochrome, chrome, you're talking um, coal, diamond, platinum, you're talking um, whatever mineral you can think of, we have it in Africa. And the reason why a lot of countries have been thriving is because they take minerals from Africa and in a lot of other countries that they do that, they also put in military operations around that so that one day when we want to rise up, we cannot be able to do so. They've been raping Africa, the continent for so many decades that it's just said what is going on. That's what this book speaks about. But it's saying right now the resources are coming to an end. More and more resource, uh, resources keep, they keep on being looted by um, the Western world and just other people who don't come from the continent of Africa. Right now, we do know about the conversation with China, etc. That's what this book speaks about. Speaks about oil, speaks about all the different resources that have been able to run the world all these years. But right now, 
these are the last days of these resources. What does the future hold for the world? Because the global elite, they've pretty much messed up the world. You guys do know about some of the things that they've been able to do, which is really sad. That's pretty much what this book speaks about. An amazing book I'd like to recommend for you. Go get yourself a copy. As Michael Clary makes clear in this powerful book, the heads of our corporate empires have decided to rip apart the planet in one last burst for profiteering. If you want to understand the next decade, I fear you better read this book. This is Bill McKibben, who's the author of Unearth. The world is facing an unprecedented crisis of resource depletion. Quite an outstanding book, exhaust, uh, exhaust, exhaustively researched, beautifully written, and convincingly, convincingly argued. This was the Huffington Post. And the Rolling Stone said it is a stunning book. I recommend this book as well. The third book that I'd like to recommend was is from my childhood hero. One of the people that inspired me to get into the music industry. I took, this is from Professor David Copeland, who says, I took much, much pleasure in reading this book as told to an autobiography of the legendary Steve Kekan, a vocal light of South Africa's darkest years of the struggle. Old and young cannot help but be inspired by this tale of triumph over his early years of loss of sight, social prejudice against the differently able and the pitfalls of a demanding and jealous industry. This short book and Kekana's enriching life itself are further blessings to those who have been uplifted by his precious gift of song. Feel so strong in that this is Kekan. I had a pleasure of interviewing him on the radio show and he um, gave me an autographed copy and um, I'd like to recommend his book, The Eye in Me, From Victim to Victor. Victor Feti Maruleke, he wrote it with him in the four it is done by Max Mujapila. The reason why I recommend the book is because, not only because he lost his loss of sight when he was young, not only because he's a lawyer and he was an incredible musician as a legend, but I think there's a lot of um, young people out there that can learn about the struggle in the 80s and how musicians operated then in the dark days of apartheid. Now imagine when you're disabled, you've got loss of sight and how the society is treating you and you just want to succeed, you just want to be a musician, but you're going through apartheid what this man had to go through and conquer and become the man that he is today is so remarkable so i recommend this book that is steve kekana the legendary great i'm glad he's still alive and we're celebrating him while he's still alive and i also recommend uh, the race for what's left and betting on the dark